All right, well, we're rolling, and we're gonna just try our first Q&A. Let's see, are we rolling? Hey guys, Phil here. We're gonna do a Q&A video. I see a lot of good comments coming through, and you guys are asking a lot of good questions, so I wanted to pick a few and address them. Here we go. All right, this first one's from Wishes, and this comment was left on Despacito Advanced. Wishes asks, are most of the arrangements done with the melody in the right hand? Or are there many arrangements for accompanying a vocalist? Well, thanks for asking, Wishes. The way that Playground Sessions arranges piano music is we take the full song with all the parts. I'm talking vocal melody, bass line, chords, even some of the drum parts, right? If there's a certain rhythm that is very particular to the song, we'll try to put that rhythm maybe in the left hand part, for example. However, we have also been getting a lot of requests lately to do this accompaniment only version of songs and we're listening. So soon we're going to launch a new genre where you can choose. We put out a new song, you can choose the classic way of putting all the parts in the arrangement. You can learn it that way or you could pick the chords only version, so to speak. So we're listening to your comments. We appreciate you guys requests for the new accompaniment version only coming soon. Question number two is from Tony Thoge on the video River Flows In You by Yoruma. He asks, at the 18 second mark, would you mind explaining to me where that F sharp minor 9, the D9, the A, and the E, and why are they sitting right there like that? Great question, Tony. Let me just pull it up, pull up my own video. Hey guys, welcome back to Playground Sessions. I'm Phil, and the exact transcription of the... All right, Tony, so here we are at the 18 second mark, and you're asking about chord symbols. These numbers and symbols underneath the bass staff, F sharp, M9, D add 2, these are explanations of the harmony that the left hand part is outlining. Or actually, to be more accurate, it's what both hands combine are outlining. So left hand might play a root and a fifth, right hand might have the third in its voicing. The chord symbol takes into account all of what's being played and essentially summarizes what the harmony is. F sharp minor 9, that's a minor chord, and we see the left hand outlining the root in the fifth, we see the right hand outlining the third, as well as a couple other notes. But essentially what we're outlining there is an F sharp minor 9 chord. On beat 3 of that measure, we see a new chord symbol, that's D add 2. That's because on beat 3 in that measure, the hands are playing new notes that outline a D chord with an added second scale degree. In the key of D, the second scale degree is E, so we see here in the left hand part we play D, A, E. That E is the added second scale degree for the D major chord. So Tony, I hope that helps. What you're looking at are chord symbols. You can ignore them if you like, but to me, they help sort of put parameters on what I'm about to sight read. I can glance down and see what the chord progression is, and then I kind of know what to expect as I start to play through the song. Thanks for writing, Tony. All right, question number three. This one's from Tight Squeeze Jam at FB. There's a name for you. And they left a comment on Stairway to Heaven. The question was, is this printable at the site somewhere? And guys, I'll be honest, I'm catching a lot of requests for, is this sheet music printable? Is this downloadable? I'll give you the same answer I give to everybody else, and that is, yes! The Playground Sessions site, that's playgroundsessions.com. Go to the song store. You can browse what songs we have. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to create an account, nothing. Now, our song library is gigantic. There's so many songs, and we're constantly adding to this every week. But just click on any song. Let's click on Imagine Dragons, Demons. I clicked on the rookie level arrangement, but you can see down here we've also got an intermediate level. For songs that have advanced level arrangements, you'll also see that down here. But here you can get a preview of what the notation looks like on the first page. You can also listen to the song itself. This is just the piano part that you will be learning in this notation. So again, that's the rookie level arrangement. Uh, and you can also preview what it sounds like with the backing track if you're going to play it in the app. So if you look down, you can see add to cart. Non-member pricing, member pricing. Let's go ahead and add it to our cart. And we can see here that I've got another song in here too. I'm just going to remove that. Here's Demons, and uh, we can proceed to checkout. That's where you'll pay. You'll get the downloadable link, and you can print, and that's all there is to it, and that's for any song. So 
What I teach on YouTube, guys, this is just one section of one difficulty level of a song. But here on the website, you can download the full sheet music to any level of any song that we've got in the library. So it's pretty cool. Next question. This one comes from Tim Doctor, and he posted this question on Sorry by Justin Bieber. He asks, how do you count the rhythm for each note? Seems like a one and a two and a for triplets, but the last five measures use one E and a two E and a. Is that right? Thanks a lot. First of all, you're welcome. Let's take a look. And listen to the section we're gonna be learning today. Tim, you're right that for triplets, we're gonna count one and a two and a three and a four and a. It doesn't really matter as much what syllables you use to count those as long as they are even three subdivisions of the beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One and a, two and a. Some people say triplet, triplet, right? All right, Tim, so we see here in the right hand we've got triplets for the first two measures. So you're right, we'll count by even subdivisions of three. But then, it's not just the last measures. Actually, here right away in measure three, we see the rhythmic feel change. We're no longer subdividing by threes anymore. We're going back to our even duple divisions. So one and, two and, three and, four and. You wrote one E and a, two E and a. That's not wrong per se, but that's what we use to subdivide 16th notes, or I should say subdivide by 16th note beats. Here, we don't need to do that because our smallest rhythmic duration of a note is an eighth note. So we really just need to find that lowest common denominator and subdivide by eighth notes. So to do that, we would count one and two and. And in measure three, what we would have is one and two and three and four and. It's not the right key, but you get the idea. And the tricky part about this song, to be honest, Tim, is we transfer back and forth between that triplet feel and a duple feel. Because right here in measure five, you see the right hand goes back to triplets. Measure seven, you see they go back to a duple division. So Tim, thanks for writing in. Next question. This one's from Vlady Griff on my video for how to play You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. The comment is, what is the name of the background track? Well, that's a great question. I can tell you that it doesn't really have a name per se. It's just a file that we made in-house to sound like the real song is playing behind you. I'm really proud of our in-house producers and mixing and mastering engineers who make our backing tracks happen. It's actually one of my favorite things to do playing along in the app is play with an awesome backing track. It beats a metronome, right? Next question comes from Isabel Lamardo. That person writes on my video for how to play Edelweiss and asks, Pena que you not speak Portuguese? Thanks. I'm gonna Go ahead and take a guess that that means, why don't you speak Portuguese? Well, my answer to that would be that I never learned Portuguese. I speak English and I was born in America. I do speak a little bit of Chinese uh, from my time visiting Beijing and going to school, my freshman year of high school out there. Uh, but it's been a long time since then. Really, my answer should, though, be that music is the universal language, right? Even though I don't speak your language, you still have found value in my piano lesson tutorials here on YouTube, and that brings me great joy. So uh, I'm glad that we all speak that musical piano language. All right, guys, next question. This one's from Eshna Sharif, and this was posted on my video tutorial for how to play Game of Thrones. Hi, Philip. The easiest ever learning tutorial. Oh, wow, thank you. I watched many tutorials, but as a beginner, I found this the best and easiest to understand. Excellent. Will you upload the remaining part of this theme as well? Now we get to the core of the question. I appreciate you asking. What I'll say to you is that we put out a ton of material in the app on a weekly basis, almost on a daily basis. And because we do the full song in three different difficulty levels, it requires a ton of time and work to put a song out. So, what I try to do here on the YouTube channel is give you a preview of what we're doing in the app. But if I'm gonna double down on all the work we're doing in the app and then give you all of that stuff as well on YouTube, the fact of the matter is there's just not enough time in the day. So what I like to do is highlight a certain section of a song from a certain difficulty level and present that to you guys on YouTube. Because we're doing a YouTube free trial for 30 days, now you're actually able to go into the app and finish what we started here on YouTube for free. So I'm not gonna plug it super hard right now, we're just doing a Q&A, but I will say that we have the full song, all parts, everything in the app, and with the 30-day free trial, you can try it yourself for free, finish stuff out, and uh, learn the whole song, hopefully. So thank you for the question. Let's go on to the next one. This one comes from Soxy Somia 
on my video for how to play a whole new world from the Aladdin soundtrack. Dear Playground Sessions, I love piano, but I need to learn basic. Could you please make some videos for me? I understand your question and I thank you for writing in, requesting some more rookie level videos here on YouTube. In fact, I've actually seen you guys are clicking on the rookie level stuff more than I expected. It's pretty tempting to go to intermediate or advanced to see how hard the stuff can get. But you guys are liking the rookie level arrangements just as much, if not more. So that's telling me I got to do more rookie stuff. So Saxy Somia, I'm going to show you something here on the YouTube channel. If you go to the channel itself and you scroll down to a playlist here, you can see browse lessons by difficulty level. Uh, what I've done is every time I choose a rookie, for example, or an intermediate or an advanced, I put it in the appropriate bucket. So you see intermediate since it's middle of the road uh, as of today, which is April 26, 2018. I've got 98 song lesson videos in there, 19 advanced. I've got 28 rookie. So we're growing. We're building out the rookie. Hey guys. But you can click on it here and on the right you see all these different lessons that I'm teaching you here that are at the rookie level. So I hope you enjoy and hope you keep your eye out for more as I continue to add them. Let's keep it moving. Our next question is from ECH4949. This comment comes on my video for Prelude in E minor by Chopin. The question is, is the advanced version in your app pretty close to Chopin's original composition or is it still simplified or altered in some way? I'd love to learn this in your app, but I want to get as close to the original score as I can. Thanks. All right, so everything we do in the app at the advanced level is intended to represent the original song as closely as possible. In terms of rhythms, melodies, key signatures, everything, we're doing it as an exact copy of the song. However, for songs that have a full band in the recording, we can't actually do that to 100% accuracy, right? We have to make some changes and some alterations. This is not true, however, for classical music that is written just for piano. So our goal has been for the advanced level of classical songs to be the exact copy of the song as you know it. So ECH4949, we're going to pull up the Prelude in E minor advanced level right now. I'm going to give you a peek into that world. So we're going to filter by classical. I'm going to go down to P. Prelude in E minor. So I believe I did the intermediate level on YouTube and you were asking about the advanced level. So here we can go down and click advanced. Now we see more accurately the real song portrayed in its true form. Just like all this stuff guys, the intermediate and rookie level arrangements must by definition be simplified if the song itself is a hard song. If it's an easy song maybe it doesn't have to be simplified. But most classical stuff we're going to have some challenges in that music. So if we want to present a level that a more beginner student can approach, we must simplify some things, right? But we also want to give you that full version for when you can ladder up to it. You've got the rookie down, you've got the intermediate down. You're on the advanced level. We're not pulling anything back at that point. So here we have the full, uh, the full song written out here. So there you go, ECH4949. I hope that helps. And I hope to see you post a video of yourself playing the advanced level of Prelude in E minor in the Facebook community for Playground Sessions members. By the way, if you're not a member, go check it out and join. Okay, guys, final question for this video. This one comes from Y. Roshani. And this was posted on my video for how to play Edelweiss, another one from Edelweiss. Y. Roshani says, great tutorial. Please explain to me the following since I have very little knowledge on Western music. In the bass part, there is E, G notes, and it's written as C over E. D and A notes written as G over D. What does C over E or G over D mean? Well, why Roshani? That's a great question, and I'll tell you. Let's pull up that video, and let's take a look at these Are chords. Different from measured. Oh, nice. Check it out. It was already on the left hand. So, in the bass part, he says there are his E, G notes, and it's written as C over E. Okay, so let's find a C over E. Here we go. Measure four of this part. C over E, and we have, like he mentions, a G on top and an E below. And I understand the confusion here for this comment because there is no C written in the bass part, right? What we're doing here is probably taking something out of its full context. I would venture to say that the right hand is likely playing a C so that combined with the left hand, it completes the chord. But what's important to remember here regardless of what the right hand is doing, is what is on the bottom of the voice. 
In other words, the lowest note in measure four is an E. So whatever we have going on above it, it's going to be over E. So we have a C over E, a G is above this E. Now, E and G together are two thirds of a C major chord. So here we're not wrong still by saying this could be a C over E harmony, but we still don't have that actual C note in there to justify it. But what I'm gonna do is skip ahead to the both hands together. We're gonna to see what happens in measure four. Yep, just as I suspected here, uh, Y Rashani, we've got E and G in the left hand and a middle C in the right hand. If you take all three of those notes together and you play them as one chord, which is exactly what we're doing in measure four, then we do have a complete C over E triad. Another way to refer to that chord is a C major chord in first inversion. So that, I hope, helps you understand why that E and G are called C over E. So again, if you look at just the left hand, we don't have the full complete chord, but when we take the right hand in, we can see the full triad. Then we can determine, one, what quality of chord is it? Major, minor, something else. And two, what inversion is it in? Or what is the lowest note of the voicing? Hope that helps. Guys, thanks for writing in all these comments and questions. Keep them coming, and I will get to them in the next question and answer video. Thanks for watching. By the way, this is my first Q&A, so if you like these and you want to see more, let me know by commenting on this video. If it's a good question, maybe I'll feature it in the next one. Thanks, guys.